modified Air Force World War II bombers flew missions over the campus and began a campaign of chemical warfare. Their objective was to kill the bugs that were killing the trees. We used to have a, a plane fly overhead every year in the spring and spread DDT from the air. MSU used to, to have a flyover, we called it, and uh, you would walk down the sidewalks on campus over by the bell tower on those nice sidewalks on your way to the Union for lunch and crunch, crunch, crunch on the sidewalk and people say, what is that? Well, it was clay pellets that had been dropped by airplanes during the early morning hours with insecticides impregnated in it. The news reports were good. We seemed to be winning. Uh, DDT had been in long use, as you well know, it was a lifesaver uh, pesticide. In, in World War II, it was used extensively, even on human beings, as a delousing treatment. And then, of course, in the tropics, uh, it was a um, godsend when it came to killing off malarial organisms and mosquito populations. I think the very first part of the story is you have um, a still uh, a post-war era in which um, um, the pesticide DDT was being very widely applied. It was solving a tremendous number of insect and disease problems. People were, were really quite excited about this. And that sense of excitement began to spread. It was during World War II that a small chemical company in St. Louis, Michigan became interested in DDT. And by the summer of 1944, that interest turned into action. During the war, the Michigan Chemical Corporation began expanding its St. Louis facilities. And by August of that year, the factory was shipping tons of DDT to the Army and the Navy. Killing bugs was big business, and business was booming. By the end of the war, Michigan Chemical continued its expansion. It was dumping millions of dollars into the economy, along with tons of DDT into the environment. DDT was too good to be true. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, during the 30 years prior to its cancellation, a total of approximately 1,350,000,000 pounds of DDT was used domestically. But it turned out to be too much of a good thing. Gradually, things started to change. And in the mid-50s, that's when the Robin problem started to pop up. And they noticed this very dramatic decline in the number of nests and the viability of nests within a, within a two-year period. And they were really trying to put two and two together as to, as to what was happening. And the, and the only commonality that they could find with respect to this nesting behavior, plus reports they were getting from elsewhere around the country, was in the use of DDT to spray um, against Dutch elm disease. Dead and dying birds were all over the campus. The reason wasn't clear. The spraying continued. But the link was DDT, and the DDT was killing the birds. But they didn't know how that was happening because, because DDT is not toxic. It's not acutely toxic to mammals. And so they, knowing that, they sort of needed tests that they didn't even have available to indicate that in fact it was, it, was, it was DDT that was causing them. And their assumption was that the birds were being sprayed directly with DDT. It was soon becoming apparent that more than just killing the elm bark beetles, DDT was a weapon of mass destruction. We noticed on campus, and it was undeniable, that our robins and other birds were shaking you would actually see that. Oh, yeah, oh, right, oh, yeah, I could go to lunch every day and see robins shaking. they just shake, you know? And then finally they'd plop over dead. Mm -hmm. 
DDT had led the pesticide industry down a dead-end road. DDT's dark side was coming to light. The only assumption was that DDT was causing this directly. And in part, that was the reason it led to such a firestorm with the agricultural community and <clears throat> the university administrators who were obviously supporting the agricultural community. They, they just did not have a, a direct cause and effect relationship that would stand up in, in front of, of what, the, uh, what farmers were saying with respect to DDT. And DDT was very, very important for controlling pests. This was, uh, this was a major pesticide that was being used. The cause was not known, but the effects were devastating. The birds were dying and a direct link to their deaths could not be found. As time went on, Dr. Wallace's research was at a standstill. They needed to dig deeper. It didn't really have the, the evidence of causality. See, it wasn't until the very early 1960s that they discovered that it was because of the worms and not because of the spraying of DDT that was directly on, onto the birds themselves. And, and the discovery of the worm, the worm connection here was, was almost accidental. And they were feeding some worms to, uh, to, some, to some fish in a, in a uh, fisheries and wildlife lab on campus. And um, I think it was fish or crawfish, and they, and they died. When that word reached Dr. Wallace, the research took a new turn. Then they discovered that the worms were, were full of, uh, of DDT. And from there, we got the, um, the concept of, um, of obviously of bioaccumulation or biomagnification. And DDT is one of those wonderful pesticides that manages to biomagnify. That means you apply it to control an organism, but it also hits non-target organisms. And the non-target organisms could be earthworms. Earthworms then continue to eat in the soil where the pesticide is leaching, and they're feeding on ve dead vegetative material and having a good time. But all the time that they're feeding, they're concentrating the DDT in their tissues. And that's when the link was made um, between, um, between the spraying, um, the DDT falling onto the ground, the worms ingesting this, and then the birds ingesting the worms. Now guess who eats earthworms? Mr. Robin. So the robins come along and eat the earthworms. The DDT, which is DDT and DDE, uh, a, a breakdown product of DDT, uh, is then released into the system of the robin and concentrated in the brain and in the liver and in the fat bodies. As time goes on, the animal doesn't excrete this compound and it concentrates to a lethal dose. Wallace and his students had their work cut out for them. I was uh, uh, a good biology student, whenever I found a dead bird, I joyfully brought it into Dr. Wallace, who thanked me profusely, uh, wrapped it properly and immediately froze it. And uh, he had a graduate student, Dick Bernard, who was working with him at the time. And uh, he was the man responsible for analyzing the concentrations of DDT in the tissues of the robins. There were some preliminary papers, preliminary um, seminars given um, at which the pesticide industry did not want to believe the facts. They wanted to blame these robin deaths on everything but DDT. Well, here you had the miracle uh, insecticide and it was now being accused by at least